12, we have to draw the curves and then find the area between them. Um, so for the first function, it is not, it's a bit difficult to draw it because um, we do have, it is a transformation of this kind of equation. X is equal to Y squared. So to understand the behavior of this uh, equation, we do have to consider the quadratic, right? That is, y is equal to x squared. So we do know how the, uh, the relationship between an input and its square looks like. So this other equation over here has the same relationship. However, uh, the input now is the y. So instead of the parabola opening up um, on the y values, it will open up on the x-axis because now the x is considered our range. So we are going to just turn this around and the graph of x is equal to y squared looks like this over here. So same kind of behavior of a parabola, but now it opens up to the positive side of the x-axis. So um, our equation here for number 12, it is a modified version of this graph. So we're just going to um, do the basic transformations that we do with our graphs. But now instead of moving up or downwards on the y-axis, we're going to move up or downwards on the x-axis. Um, so let's just rearrange this equation, which is 4x plus y squared is equal to 12. So we do want to um, express this as a function of y. Therefore, we have 4x is equal to minus y squared plus 12, or x is equal um, minus y squared over 4 plus 3. So we can see that it does behave the same way. Um, it looks like a parabola that opens up on the x-axis, but now it opens up to the left, um, to the negative aspect, to the negative side, because we do have a negative multiplying the y squared. So it opens up to the left side, and also the vertex has been shifted upwards by 3. But notice now that the orientation of our, our shift is not up or down in the y-axis, but up or down in the x-axis. So now our vertex will be at x equals 3, and it will open up to the left, like so. Um, so we'll call this x is equal to minus y squared over 4 plus 3. And I'll just delete this so that we have more space. Okay, and now we do need to uh, draw the other equation, which is x is equal to y. So this one over here, there's no mystery. It's just your linear function that passes at the origin um, with a slope of 1. So this is y is equal to x. Now, we can very clearly see that the area between them is this um, section here that I'm going to shade. Uh, and we have to ask ourselves, do we want to integrate with respect to x or with respect to y? So that choice is really going to depend on how I'm going to draw my rectangles. Now, remember that when I have the integral, which is the area beneath, beneath the curve, I get this area because I have a bunch of rectangles, right? As we've seen with the Riemann sum, and then it becomes the integral when these rectangles are infinitely thin. So when we integrate with respect to x, we do draw vertical rectangles where the base is dx and the height is just f of x. And the base is dx because it's like a little chunk of the x-axis, uh, which is horizontal. Or we could draw the horizontal rectangle, where now the base is f of y, and then the height is dy for a little chunk of the y-axis, which is, you know, in this orientation. Um, and we can clearly see here that if we draw... Oops, that is not what I meant to do. Um, if we draw these again, there, these horizontal rectangles... Um, 
I do have the advantage where the upper boundary will always be the blue curve and the lower boundary will always be the red curve. Had I drawn them vertically, um, at some points my upper boundary would be the red curve and at other points my upper boundary would be the blue curve. So I would have to break it into two integrals. Um, that's a bit messy. We don't like that. So we are just going to do uh, integration with respect to y. So before we can integrate, we do need to find the, the bounds, right? Uh, and that is these points of intersection where the curves are equal to each other. So to find the bounds, we're going to set these curves equal to each other. So I do have um, minus y squared over 4, 4 plus 3 is equal to x. I'm going to bring everything uh, is equal to y. I want everything in terms of y since I am taking the dy. Uh, and then I'm going to bring everything over to the left. So I have minus y squared over 4 plus uh, 3 minus y is equal to 0. And now I'm just going to multiply both sides by 4 so that I can easily factor it. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 and just kind of switch the order around. Um, so that we can factor it and see how we factor it way easier. And actually, I'm going to multiply it by negative 4 instead of, um, instead of 4, because I do want to get rid of that negative. So multiplying both sides, I'm going to multiply this by 4, and then multiply this by 4, right? So that gives me by negative 4 and negative 4, I mean. So that gives me um, negative 4 divided by negative 4. That's just 1. y squared and then I'm going to multiply by the y, minus 4 times minus y, which is plus 4y, and then minus 4 times plus 3 minus 12 is equal to the other side, we just have 0, right? Um, so now we can see that we can factor it very easily, because if we choose the numbers uh, plus 6 and minus 2, when we multiply them, it gives us minus 12, and then when we add them, it gives us plus 4. So this is um, y minus 6, Sorry, plus 6 times y um, minus 2 is equal to 0. So from here we have that y1 is equal to negative 6 and y2 is equal to 2. Um, so once we have this, we can now uh, set up our integral. So it's just the integral from minus 6 to 2, right? Um, and now we, we choose the biggest function minus the smallest function. Uh, the biggest function here is the one, it's not a function, sorry, I meant equation. Uh, the biggest equation is the one that's drawn in blue. So we have um, minus y squared over 4 plus 3 and then minus the smaller equation. So minus y and all of this times dy. Now we can't forget the dy because remember that we are just summing up these rectangles. And for it to be a rectangle with an area, we do need to multiply it by the the width which is dy um so now that we have everything in terms of y multiplied it by, multiplied by dy we can just go ahead and integrate it um so we just take the reverse power rule so that is minus y cubed over four times three which is 12 plus this is three y and then minus y squared over 2. All of this evaluated from negative 6 to 2. Um, so once we, once we have this, we just apply the boundaries, right? So the upper boundary is minus 2, two cubed is 8, minus 8 over 12. And then plus 3 times 2, which is 6. And then minus... 2 squared over 2, so minus 4 over 2. And then I'm going to do the lower boundary. So this is minus, um, minus 6 cubed over 12, multiplied by another minus. So actually, um, maybe I'm going to, to do this like this so we can see it better. So that is uh, minus, minus 6 cubed over 12, and then... Um, minus 6 times 3, and then minus minus 6 squared over 2. So when we clean this up a little bit, this is minus, um, minus 
2 over 3, right? Plus 6 minus 4 over 2, that is plus 6 minus 2, um, so that is plus 4. And then we do have three minuses here, so the three minuses become just one minus. And then 6 to the power of 3 is 216 um, divided by 12, which gives gives us 18, so minus 18, and then we have minus minus, so plus, plus 6 times 3, plus 18, and then here we have um, this minus inside, because it's minus 6 squared, becomes just plus 36, 36 divided by 2 is 18, so we have minus minus 18, so plus 18. So overall, um, these two, they cancel, right, so we just have 18 plus 4 minus 2 thirds, which is equal to um, 22 minus 2 thirds, which is 64 over 3. Um, so that was quite a, a bit of math, right? Uh, but it's, it's basically just algebra that we're plugging in. So to recap what we did, uh, we set these curves equal to each other. Um, we decided that we were going to integrate it using the horizontal rectangles, right? So that means integrate it with respect to y. And then we set up our integral. Before we did that, we did have to find the boundaries. Um, to find the boundaries, we set these curves equal to each other, and we found the point where they intersect, um, the point in the y-axis. And then we just um, set up our integral, and then from there, it's pretty straightforward.